It's been a great year for TFB TV. Hell, it's been a great decade for TFB TV. Almost had a little spilly spill there. It's also been an outstanding decade for guns. So that's what we're doing today on TFB TV, the top 10 guns of the decade from 2010 to 2019. Cheers. <music> I'm going to keep this quick because otherwise you guys won't watch this video if I spend like two minutes on every single pick. And the shooting's going to start any second now because it's New Year's Eve in New Orleans. We made a poll for our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters, and we consulted with the firearm blog writers, TFB TV contributors, and said, guys, what do you think the 10 best guns of the past decade are? We went to you, our supporters, and we got over 500 votes. We asked, which ones do you think are the best? And we created a top 10 just for you. So here goes. Ah yes, number 10. It's almost as if in 2016, I felt a great disturbance in the gun force. Like a million, God damn it, sucker, mother piece of shit, suck my bombs, were all suddenly silenced. That's because the Ruger Mark IV came out. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Ruger Mark series, this is probably the most popular 22 handgun of all time. Bill Ruger personally designed it in 1949 around the most dangerous handgun in the history of creation, the Nambu. I had a Mark II whenever I was younger, and I think that's how I learned how to curse. Taking apart and putting the Mark II back together is the biggest pain in the ass in the entire world for such a happy gun, you know, such a fun little plinking gun. So with the Mark IV, basically the major change was they made it easier to put back together. Most popular 22 handgun of all time, now it's easy to take apart and put back together. It's our number 10. Number nine, I was very surprised that only 7% of you thought that this gun was the top gun of the decade, and that is the Smith & Wesson Shield and the Smith & Wesson Shield 2.0. This was one of the first excellent single stack nine millimeters. It came out in 2012, well ahead of say the Glock 43, very reliable, rust resistant, less than an inch thick. It only weighed 19 ounces and it holds seven plus one rounds of nine millimeter in an almost pocketable frame. Best of all, it seems like every couple of months you'll get a rebate from Smith & Wesson for like 50 or 60 bucks, making these things like $199 each. At least the Smith & Wesson Shield 1.0. The 2.0, they upgraded it, better grip texture, forward slide serrations, a much better trigger. While there were several single stack 9mm pistols prior to the Smith & Wesson Shield, this one was really the first one to be backed by a big company that was reliable and affordable, and that's why, at least for a moment in time, it was the best selling single stack 9mm of all time, and it may still be, even though the Glock 43 I know sold at least like a million copies in its first year or two. So. Cheers to the Smith & Wesson Shield. Moving on to the number eight from 2015. We polled you all, as I said, and we took all the runners up. This was kind of a runner up. I didn't really think it was a top five gun, but we posed it to you and we said, which one of these gun designs do you think is the least important? Well, the Ruger Precision Rifle got the least amount of votes. That means the fewest people thought it was the least important design, with only 6% of you thinking that the Ruger Precision Rifle was less important than other designs that we put to you. So the Ruger Precision Rifle, very simply, it is a precision rifle made by Ruger. It's a bolt action, excellent gun. Our precision rifle expert, Joel, he's really one of the snootiest SOBs that you've ever met when it comes to high-end gear. And you guys get upset at him a lot for it, but I respect him and I respect his opinion. So when Joel, says that this is probably the best entry-level precision rifle for the money, you better listen. You're looking at a sub-MOA, out-of-the-box precision rifle that needs nothing but glass whenever you buy it. Excellent adjustable stock, free float handguard. We've probably done like five videos mentioning the Ruger Precision Rifle over the years just because it's that good. And recently they launched it in Magnum calibers as well. This is a sub-MOA, out-of-the-box gun that cost you just a tick over $1,000. And that's why it's number eight. Moving on to number seven with 8% of the vote, we've got the Sig Sauer MPX, one of my favorite pistol caliber carbines. This is a nine millimeter sub gun made by Sig. And in my opinion, 
it took all of the shortcomings of the venerable MP5 and it improved upon them. It weighs about a pound less than the MP5. It'll cost you about $1,000 less than the H&K SP5, but it has a few more tricks up its sleeve. It's got fully ambi controls, great ergonomics, and the exact same manual of arms as the AR-15. So if you know how to shoot an AR-15, you're gonna be able to pick the MPX up and just run with it. Unlike the MP5, it's optic ready right out of the box. You can put in your own flip up sights of your choice rather than being stuck with the sights that are on the gun. One of my favorite things, it has a last round bolt hold open, unlike the MP5, making mag changes quicker, easier. It's also got a beveled and flared magazine well to help you with that, unlike the very narrow magazine well in the MP5. It's also very easy to gunsmith by yourself at home. You can change the barrel, change the caliber, change the length of the barrel and the handguard at home with simple hand tools, unlike the MP5, which requires you to have a eight year degree from a German institution of higher education in order to perform any work on it. It's also extremely reliable in light shooting because it uses a short stroke gas piston with a rotating closed bolt, which is extremely uncommon and perhaps unique for a nine millimeter sub gun. So that's why we say, A, cheers MPX. Moving on to number six, guys, I'm sorry about this. I forgot to put it on both of the lists. I figure I'd just put it somewhere in the middle of this video because it's one of my most favorites. This is, it's my damn list, all right? I let you guys vote on it, but it's my damn list and that's why the Gen 5 Glock 19 is going to be on here. You guys remember when I went to Glock in Smyrna, Georgia for the Gen 5 Glock 19 and Glock 17 reveal? I was elated, of course. You had over 20 improvements from the Gen 4 to the Gen 5 gun, the most notable of which the Glock Marksman barrel, which made it the most accurate Glock of all time. You had the more ergonomic grip texture and grip frame omitting the finger grooves. The NDLC coating, which Glock claims is even better than its prior iterations of nitrocarburizing, tenifer, and so on. An ambidextrous slide release and a flared magazine well. According to Glock's research, the Gen 5 Glock 19 is its most durable and reliable Glock 19 Ever. The Glock 19 is possibly the most popular 9mm pistol of all time. So when you talk about the most durable, the most reliable, and the most ergonomic iteration of that gun being the Gen 5 Glock 19, you got to put it on the list. It came out in 2017, so it's one of our more recent entries, and it's proven in the past three years or so that it's a great gun. Half of you will love and half of you will hate that there's gonna be quite a few SIGs on this list just because they came out with so many guns in the past decade. The number five is the SIG MCX. The MCX is everything that an advanced carbine should be. Imagine if you took the ease of use of the M16, the ergonomics of the M16, the accuracy of the M16, and you combined it with the legendary reliability of the AK-47. But you also made it easier to gunsmith than either of those guns. Well, there you have it, the SIG MCX. It's about as light as the AR-15 M16 platform, but it uses a more sophisticated and complicated short stroke piston system, but makes the gun more reliable. And because it uses a piston system and has an internal recoil spring, you don't need that clunky buffer tube that you have from the AR-15 AK-47, so you can install folding and collapsing stocks as you wish. Changing calibers, easy peasy Japanesey, go from 223Z all the way down to 300 Black Easy. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. But you can also do 762-39Z. And again, this is without any gunsmithing, this is just with simple hand tools. You can change out the barrel, you can do the caliber changes yourself. 762-39, 300 Blackout, 223-556. And best of all, with the conversion kit, and it, I'm talking like this is one little piece of metal, you can put MCX uppers on M16 and AR-15 lowers. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the SIG MCX Rattler, five and a half inch barrel, which is almost jocular, 300 blackout, this thing shoots. If you put a suppressor on it and you shoot subsonic 300 black through it, it pretty much obviates any pistol caliber sub gun. It's as quiet as it gets, but it still hits like a 45 up to 200 yards. Woof, you guys are gonna hate this one. You're gonna hate it, you're gonna hate it. And I would say I'm sorry, but I am not sorry that the high point YC9, the Yeet Cannon, is number four. You all know it's a tradition. Whenever I have a list, 
I always do a controversial number four, and I think this one is perfect for it. First of all, it's kind of controversial because, well, it's been made, it hasn't been released yet, so I'm not sure it even counts as being in this decade. It may not even come out in 2020, at least into production, uh, as far as we know. But what is it? What is it? The High Point Yeet Cannon is an epiphany. It is the second coming of Christ. No, I'm kidding. It's a uh, cheap, like $100, $150 9 millimeter handgun, but it's reliable. But it's reliable. And if you guys know the High Point C9 that's been out for forever and ever, made out of pot metal and plastic, reliable as all get out, kind of a limited capacity, clunky as hell, straight blowback design, very simple, very inexpensive, very unsophisticated. Not like a nice tuxedo and a beer in a champagne glass. But it's still outscored in the voting, the Shield, and the MPX, and it basically tied the SIG MCX. The Yeet Cannon, or the YC9, the second iteration of the High Point C9. Essentially, High Point said, look, we're going to listen to you guys. We're going to have interchangeable sights. We might put an RMR cut on there. We're going to put forward slide serrations. We're going to enhance the design a little bit, make it look a little more modern, change the grips out, make a double stack magazine, and include a threaded barrel. And that's pretty cool. So if anything, this is one of those A for effort situations. Is the High Point YC9 going to be a piece of shit? Certainly. Is it going to be reliable though? Yeah, it will be. And you're going to have a few more features that were lacking on the High Point C9. So cheers to High Point. Moving on up to number three with 13% of the vote, you have the Glock 43 and 43X and 48. They're all kind of lumped in together. Why? Because they're all kind of the same gun. You've got the Glock 43, which was Glock's first entry in 2015. The Glock 43 is Ultra reliable, it's Glock reliability, Glock manual of arms. Love this gun, great magazine release, great grip texture, about an inch thick. Utterly reliable, utterly shootable, especially if you're familiar with Glock already. They just made it in a package that's very easy to slip in your waistband. Thank God this happened. I was waiting on it a long time. But you only had six plus one capacity. So Glock introduces the 43X, which uses the same slide as the Glock 43, although they added forward slide serrations. But it takes a 10 round magazine. And now Shield Arms is making flush fit 15 round magazines. So you get the same capacity as a Glock 19 in a gun that's hardly bigger than any other single stack nine millimeter out there on the market. So thin, a little bit bigger grip, and in fact, the grip is maybe like less than a tenth of an inch thicker than the grip on the Glock 43. That is between the 43 and the 43X, although the slides are interchangeable. Then finally, you have the 48, which is just a Glock 43X, but with a longer slide and barrel. This is one of my favorite guns, possibly my number one of the decade, but you guys gave it enough votes to get it to number three. Moving on to number two with a whopping 20% of the votes. The SIG P320 slash M17. You can see why the SIG P320 got there though. Now what are we talking about? We're talking about just another polymer frame, striker fire, double stack handgun, right? Well, not exactly. First of all, SIG's done a great job with numerous iterations. You've got compacts, subcompacts, tournament guns. You've got the X, the X compact series, which have fantastic triggers night sights, undercuts. So they've done a great job. And the great thing about it is you really only have to buy one SIG P320 because it utilizes a serialized trigger pack, not a serialized frame like every other gun out there. That means you can just drop your trigger pack into any other frame. So you, if you want a subcompact tomorrow, get a subcompact frame for like 40 or 50 bucks. All you got to do is swap it out. They're not the first ones to do it, but they're the first ones who got really, really good at it. And that's why it's been adopted as the US Armed Forces next generation handgun, replacing the Beretta 92. Hats off to SIG. They certainly had a great decade with that news. Finally, number one, with 33.4% of the vote, just barely over a third of the total vote, the SIG P365, I think, this is a fantastic pistol. And if you had to apply that overused and now somewhat annoying label, game changer, game changer to any gun on this list, it would be the SIG P365. When it came out in 2018, the SIG P365 was roughly the width of a single stack handgun, about an inch thick. However, unlike all the other single stack handguns out there, like the Glock 43, which only held six rounds, the Shield, which held seven rounds, the SIG P365 holds 10 rounds 
flush fit. How did they do it? They reconfigured their magazines. So they're like a single and a half semi double stack, but they fit into a single stack frame. It's got one of the best striker fired triggers of any handgun out there. Excellent X-ray night sights, forward slide serrations, the super tough nitron coating, eminently shootable, eminently carryable, and now there are several other iterations, including the SIG P365XL, which has a little bit bigger butt, a little bit longer slide, so you've got a longer barrel, longer sight radius, and it's a 12 round flush fit. You've also got the SIG P365 SAS, which I was less impressed with, but it was received warmly by the consumer market. So guys, the firearm blog, which has been around for like 12 years now, thanks you for an excellent decade and TFB TV, which will be five years old, January 20th, 2020. Wow, holy smokes, it's 2020 guys, can you believe that? In just a few hours, it's gonna be 2020 and I'm glad that I got to spend my New Year's Eve with you. Happy New Year, everyone. Cheers, congratulations to the top 10 guns of the decade.